come out and show them. Hello, Talking Reef. This is Estrivian again, also known as Samuel, uh, in real life. This time I'm going to show you another little DIY thing. This will be a lot shorter than the one last time. This time what I got for you is how I connected my return line with a closed loop system so I could get, a, it's probably something like five, six times the flow going through there. Because uh, I have this MAG24 as my return pump. I, I know it's too strong. Um, it was a gift and I can't, and that's what I have. So. Originally what I had is I had it all set back. I had everything turned down as far as I could to try to keep the thing from blowing the fish out of the water when it would pump back in and draining the sump to nothing. Um, so this time what I decided to do is combine it with a closed loop system so it would pull water from the display back down into the sump, blow it back into the display again. So in other words, this water is not being filtered, it's not being um, heated or recycled in any way, it's just being cycled back through, uh, just like a closed loop. Now, at the same time, there's a small hole in it, or small, like, relative to the rest of it, um, to pull in water from the sump, so it acts as both. Yes, this is putting a lot of eggs in one basket, so to speak, in that if this one pump goes down, I lose both. I do have some backup power heads to keep flow going in there should that happen, however, um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I recommend this as a everything, everyone should do this kind of deal, but it, for me it was just a way of utilizing the MAG24 better and trying to keep the sound from going crazy because it was a, it's a loud, loud pump. So the first thing I'm going to show you is what it looks like inside the actual tank, inside the display. Uh, this is what we have. There are the two little screens. There's none on the bottom right now. Uh, I'm going to put one in in just a little bit, but this is where it sucks the water in, and this might be a better angle here. It's you can see it, the zip tie deal is just to hold this little piece down. Uh, this sits just below the surface of the water, so if the pump shuts off, it cuts the siphon on this thing. Uh, the water goes up and over the back, just like a little loop or a U. And you can see a little whirlpool forming in the corner on the left there. So this is the view from behind. Uh, as you can see, it comes out the top there and goes down this long pipe all the way down to the very, very bottom of my sump. Um, and it, it's actually resting on the stand. You can see a little tiny elbow right there. So this is sort of closer in there. This uh, shows you the, the U that I put in the bottom. So it's coming down, going through this little U, and then coming back up. And I'll get you a better picture of that in a second here. But um, So it's coming down this side. It goes over and then it goes back up, and then it goes up into the sump from there. So this is underneath the tank, this is the one part of the sump, as you can see this is where the pump is. So it's coming down here, down through the red line there, back down through that U, up, over, and then down into the sump here. And I will take off the lid of the sump part so you can see what it looks like. So at the moment the pump's off so you can see what it looks like inside, and I do have a ball valve here, so the black one so I can control the amount of flow going through this so I can regulate how much it's pulling from the sump itself. And now I'm just kind of following the line here. As you can see a lot of it's submerged. This is the part that pulls in from the sump, uh, the part with all the drilled things. I drilled it all so I could cut down on the amount of whirlpools that it formed. And there's the pump. So this screws in right to the front and then it's blown back up through this part and then I have a regulator right here. I'm going to go back a little bit. And this goes into the other, where my deep sand bed is. This goes into the other bo uh, box here. Um, this is just to regulate the flow uh, so I can turn it down if I need to without putting any uh, undue strain on the pump. Pumps it up here, splits it in half. There's a ball valve on either side to control the flow even further. And without this thing, I had to turn these ball valves down to almost closed because the pump was pushing so much water it would drain the sump um, way faster than it could be replenished from the overflows. Now with this system I've a I'm able to open these two ball valves the entire way and actually close down that uh, little return le loop that goes to the sand bed. So it it has gone from, I don't know what exactly what the flow was before but it was you know a slow trickle I guess you could say 
down to up to what the full pump can do um or just below that so 2400 gallons per hour so it's probably pushing 2000 gallons per hour right now this is a look from the inside this is the return line so it blows out there and it splits it at this t so it blows out both sides um i don't have those lock lines on it i'm going to put lock lines on it at some point that little white tube will cut the siphon when it um when it shuts off and i have to finish this off with a shot of the tank itself as you can see i only have i don't have much in there right now i have algae that's about it um there's that cross from the little doohickey and there it is can you guess how many lights i have two that's right i have two on one side of the tank <laughs> can you guess which side the lights are on i'm getting there <laughs>